Did you know that it's possible to convert any basis of a subspace of Rn into an orthogonal basis, or a nice basis, even an orthonormal basis? Let's look at R2 to understand the rationale. We can see that x1 and x2 span R2, but they're not orthogonal. In order to create two orthogonal vectors, we pick one of them, let's say x1, we normalize it. This means finding the unit vector of x1 that's pointing in the same direction, it just has a length of 1, and then we can project x2 onto this line, and this would create a new vector. This could be written as x2 minus the portion that n1 has already taken care of, has already spanned. Then we could normalize this vector, let's call this e2. We can normalize e2 and find our second orthogonal vector, let's say here and here, n1 and n2. Now let's look at a more general case, if we have a basis that is x1 to xm. According to the Gram-Schmidt algorithm, I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, we can create an orthogonal basis by taking a vector xi and subtracting the portion that the other vectors have already spanned. Let's walk through the steps. We start by picking e1, let's say e1 is x1, and then we normalize it. Then e2 would be x2 minus the portion that n1 already spans. We normalize it and we get n2. e3 would be x3 minus the portion of x3 that n1 already covers minus the portion that n2 spans. We can normalize this and get n3. And continue on. Let's find an orthogonal basis of this subspace u. u is spanned by these four vectors, but before we can create an orthogonal basis, we have to know what vectors form a non-orthogonal basis of u. First of all, I noticed that in the third component we have a zero. Our vectors will always have a zero in that third component, therefore these vectors don't span all of R4. R4 has a dimension of 4, since we have 4 vectors and they don't reach all of R4, we have to have linear dependence within this span. To show this using a matrix, we can write a times our first vector, plus b times our second vector, plus c times our third, and d times our fourth, and this equals the zero vector in R4. We could have equally written the vectors directly as columns in our matrix. We could have simplified the left side and then written it as a matrix, that would also have worked, but just be slightly longer. We can quickly row reduce, row 2 plus row 1, row 4 minus row 1, and switch row 3 and row 4, row 2 divided by 2, and then we can add row 3 and row 2 together, row 1 minus row 2, and lastly row 2 minus row 3. We can now see that the fourth vector is a linear combination of the first three. Negative one times the first one, negative three times the next one, and three times the third vector. Because of this, we can eliminate this vector, and the remaining three vectors form a basis of u. Next, let's pick our first vector to be our starting point, then let's normalize it. One over the square root of one squared plus negative one squared plus one squared times our vector. Next, e2 will be our second vector, so one, one, zero, zero, minus, minus the second vector dot n1 times n1. Again, this is just the portion that the first vector has already covered. We can pull out the one over root three, then we get one minus one, which is zero. These First two vectors that we picked are actually already orthogonal, which is why we get 0 times n1. You can see if we take the dot product of these two vectors, we already get 0. We can say that n2, let's just normalize e2, would be 1 over root 2 times 1, 1, 0, 0. And e3 is our third vector, 1, 1, 0, 1, minus the portion covered by n1 and the portion covered by n2. So let's do our vector dot n1. If we dot these two vectors, we get 1 minus 1 plus 1, so just times 1. Next, our vector dot n2, and we get 1 plus 1, so 2, 2 over root 2. So now we can plug all this in, so we have our vector, our third vector, minus how much of n1 has been covered, 1 over root 3 times n1, minus 2 over root 2 times n2. Let's simplify. We can add these two vectors together first. Next, if we write a 3 over 3 in front of our first vector, we can factor out 1 over 3 from both coordinates. 
Next, we want to normalize this. This means doing one over the norm. The norm in this case would be the absolute value of the scalar, in this case, the sign doesn't change, times root negative one squared plus one squared plus two squared times the entire vector. We'll end up with just one over root six times negative one, one, zero, two. Now we can put these three orthonormal vectors into a set, and this will form an orthonormal basis of u. If we just wanted an orthogonal and not an orthonormal basis, we could just delete these scalars. If we call this b1, b2, and b3, we could check the vectors are mutually orthogonal. b1 dot b2 equals zero, b1 dot b3 equals zero, and b2 dot b3 is also zero. And we see that this is true.